British academic held in the United Arab Emirates for six months on spying charges has lodged a legal complaint against the Foreign Office. Matthew Hedges says the FCO failed in its duty of care to negotiate his release and help him clear his name. He is demanding that an independent inquiry be held into the case. Well, Matthew Hedges and his wife, Daniela, joining us now. Hello to you both. Thanks for joining us on the programme this afternoon. We appreciate it. Uh, Matthew, to you first of all, you feel that the Foreign Office is not doing enough. What more could they do? So, first of all, it's not just to look at what they can do now going forward, but also going back. Looking through their experience and how they handled my case for the six, seven months I was in detention, it's to say, right, where did things, what, what, why did things happen in the way they did? What lessons can they, can they learn from to not only understand why my detention happened in the way it did, but also use that to help improve their own service, and improve their own relations going forward for other people so they don't have to go through the same episode as what I did. Daniela, are you holding the Foreign Secretary, the present Foreign Secretary, personally responsible. I mean, he would say that he has personally intervened to uh, ensure Matthew's release. No, I think uh, there's been a, a big misunderstanding. Uh, we both acknowledge the importance of his intervention in securing Matt's release, and it's something that we're incredibly grateful for. However, the Foreign Secretary alone is not the Foreign Office. Um, it took the Foreign Office seven months out of which six months I was constantly battling for them to take action and another month where I was holding an imp incredibly extensive media and public campaign for the British uh, Foreign Office to act and they didn't until the sixth month. So what we're trying to inquire and what we're, we're trying to understand is why did it take so long and why did everything happened so slowly. These were six months that were taken away from our lives and six months where Matt was held in incredibly unacceptable uh, conditions. And that's what we're trying to understand, why. Um, why do you think it is, Matthew? This is something that so far we've had no answer from. This is something that no one can actually explain properly why why things occurred in the way they did. You know, I, I was sentenced to life imprisonment, uh, accused of being a, an MI6 agent. It's not only uh, my my dignity, my, my integrity that's being questioned by the decision taken by the UA to do this, but it also questions that of the UK Foreign Office as they were implicated in that decision. And so we want to urge the Foreign Office to help us clear my name and show to these types of countries, to these authoritarian states, that you can't act in this way and, and expect to get, a, expect to get um, away with that. We ultimately are looking for justice and a, a true sense of accountability for those who kept Matt in the conditions they did, and also for those who didn't act in a timely manner to actually be held accountable for the suffering that we had to endure throughout nearly one year. And who are those people who didn't act in a timely manner? Well, we don't know, and that's what we need to understand. We need to understand what steps in the whole process of the Foreign Office handling case uh, went wrong, and ultimately who are the people and who are the the entities responsible for for things going as slowly and as badly as they did. No man should be held in solitary confinement for six months, let alone being handed a life in prison sentence for a, a crime he didn't commit. And definitely people must be held accountable and institutions must be held accountable for this happening. And so, Kay, sorry to interrupt. So we have assisted the Foreign Office with a general investigation into how they handle consular affairs around the world, but we were promised and we have we are trying to continue to urge the Foreign Office and the Foreign Secretary actually who made the promise to have an, an independent, open investigation to how they handled my case. Until we actually get this information and there has been a, a thorough analysis of what actually happened, then we don't know where that 
where mistakes were made and so improvements can be made for the future so other people don't experience what I did. But what mistakes were made, uh, Danny? We don't know, and that's what we need to understand. We've uh, submitted a freedom of information request to the Foreign Office. It's been five months since we submitted it, and we still don't actually have the documentation. So until we don't actually have this information that we've urged the Foreign Office uh, to provide us, to help us with, um, we can't actually assess you know, where mistakes were made and who made them. Uh, that's why it's so important, so vital for the Foreign Office to cooperate with us in the same way that we have tried to cooperate with them in improving their own consular services. So the basis of your case, Matthew, is that it took a long time to get you out. I mean, what, what more is... I mean, you, you, you admitted that it was an authoritarian state that was holding right. you. Um, I suppose the Foreign Secretary and the Foreign Office would say diplomacy takes time. We need to do that behind the scenes, especially with, an, with a country uh, like the UAE. Uh, and these things, these negotiations do take time, but we did manage to get you out uh, as quickly as we possibly could. And while we were doing that, we had uh, three or four separate visits where we came to make sure that you were OK. That, that they are totally valid points. Um, and I would certainly understand that argument more towards a country, say, uh, like Iran, but with the UAE, who is a an increasingly close ally to the UK, it it seems odd that it wasn't communicated. And that the Foreign Office claims many times in conversations to us that they weren't they weren't aware of the actual charges being held against me. I was being held in solitary, prolonged solitary confinement for over six months. I was being fed an increasingly strong cocktail of medication. I was denied um, even even something as simple as a shower. I was issued with threats of torture. And there are, there are many opportunities and instances wherein the Foreign Office should have, and I, I don't know where, and, uh, where it broke down, but there should have been more contact to, to understand why I was being held in the extrajudicial way I was. I was not being held in a jail. I was being held in an office where I was protected and I wasn't able to, to have any interaction with anyone. The fact that I wasn't able to visit, I wasn't have, able to have a visit from someone from the consular section until seven weeks into my detention, after which I had already confessed to being an MI6 agent under duress, under threat of torture, under you know the, the, the influence of, of the medication they were giving me. Why, why wasn't I able to have that interaction with my government before then? If the, the Foreign Office knew from the, from the very day I was detained, why couldn't they have used those close links and ties to communicate to the UA that I was in fact innocent no matter what they believed? Okay, and Danny, this is actually Danny, part of just, our complaint. Danny, if I could just make this point. Is, is your case not against the UAE rather than the British government? No, we're not. We have to make it clear that this is not about us filing a case against the Foreign Office. This is about us asking, well, really demanding what is rightfully, um, what, what we actually have a right to is information and clarity about what happened and where things went wrong. Naturally, the UAE are the ones in the wrong to have uh, detained Matt, but that's not to say that the British government had no responsibility in in defending him and in actually stepping up for him, seeing as he was accused of working for the British intelligence falsely. What, uh, part of our complaint as Sorry, well... Sorry but isn't that what they did? Isn't that what they did? And some might say, in, you know, if you look at somebody like Nazanin Zaghari Rakhib, how long she's been in jail, uh, Matthew came out within seven months, seven months of hell without question, uh, being fed this cocktail of drugs and treated appallingly, but in the great scheme of things, that was quite a short period compared to some other people who were being held against their will, British citizens around the world. And the Foreign Office would say that that was down to um, their, their diplomacy. With all due respect, and this is me being the person who was in constant touch with the Foreign Office for six months before I broke the news public, for six months there was absolutely no movement uh, Matt had access to two consular visits. He was still held in absolutely abhorrent conditions. And like he said, unlike Nazanin, he wasn't being held in a, in a country whose relationship to the UK is hostile. He was held in a country 
who is a very close ally to the UK. So it's completely, whilst your point is perfectly valid, and yes, Matt came out before many other British citizens have been able to, that's not to say it was right. Uh, and I think the only person who can actually testify the hardship of spending six months in solitary confinement and being drugged is Matt. So neither you nor I nor anyone else can be in a position to say, well, it was six months, so you're better off. It's not the case. No, I'm not sure that I'm completely saying that. What I'm saying is that um, the Foreign Office, potentially, they would say, was working behind the scenes throughout, which is why they managed to reduce the length of time from a life sentence to seven months. Uh, in jail before you eventually managed to come home, Matthew. Do you, do you give them any credit for that? Well, they haven't been, they haven't assisted getting the decision overturned. Um, whilst I was held in seven months, I was given a presidential pardon. The, the court still sentenced me to life. Um, the Foreign Office only intervened once it had been made public and they had actually tried to stop it they, they deliberately tried to stop it going public. You know, when Danny did go to the press, they, they intervened to continue that, that quiet diplomacy route which you spoke about. I'm lucky, but not everyone should have to be given a life sentence. I was taken back to the same office. I wasn't taken to jail. It was a completely arbitrary process which occurred. And the Foreign Office knew that this was, a, that this was happening. Um, if they want to keep a, a, a close relationship, you know, with the UAE in this example or others that may be holding people in such a, a similar and, and, and unlawful way, then they should really be standing up and, and highlighting their innocence. They've, they've come out and said that I wasn't in MI6, that they've made that very publicly and they've made it very clear. So then we're asking them to help us say this, communicate this wider to the, to the UA to get the decision overturned, to make a point, to make a statement, to say you can't do this and you can't expect to get away with it so other people can't be treated in the same way in the future. And Danny, you think that the Foreign Office only began working on this case once you went public? No. What I do believe, though, is that the case was escalated and their approach to it was much more assertive and much more effective once I did go to the public. Uh, I am perfectly aware that there was a concert team uh, who was dedicated to working towards providing certain uh, rights for Matt, but their approach was not effective. And our question and our inquiry is why wasn't it timely and effectively? Uh, done 